Welcome to another video. Let's do a trig proof. If alpha, beta and gamma are all positive angles, non-negative angles, and they add up to pi, and we're also given that the sine of gamma is equal to the cosine of alpha plus the cosine of beta, we want to show that alpha must be pi over 2 or beta must be pi over 2. At least one of them is pi over 2 and there is no other way. Let's get into the video. So to get this started, it is important to note that every information provided is important. Otherwise, you will not be able to show what we are expected to show. So let's start with the algebra part of it, which is the second line, which gives us an equation. It says that alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to pi. And then down here, we see that sine gamma is cosine alpha plus cosine beta. So what I want to do is write gamma in terms of alpha and beta, since it looks like that's the focus of the whole exercise. So we're going to say that gamma must be equal to pi minus alpha plus beta. So if you subtract alpha plus beta from both sides, you're going to end up with that. And then we can write the next expression, which is sine gamma, which is going to be sine sine gamma is now equal to sine pi minus alpha plus beta. Nice. Okay. Now, using the angle sum and angle difference formula, we know that sine A minus B is going to be sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. We're going to use that here just to find what this really means. So this is going to be sine pi cosine alpha plus beta minus cosine pi sine alpha plus beta. Nice. So what does this translate into? We know that sine pi is zero. So everything here becomes zero. We are left with negative. What is cosine pi? It's negative one. What is sine alpha plus beta? It's going to be sine, oh, just that, alpha plus beta. Well, negative times negative gives us positive, so we end up with sine alpha plus beta. Nice. So, we know that sine gamma is equal to sine alpha plus beta. But they also gave us that sine alpha plus beta is cosine alpha plus cosine beta. So I can go here and replace this with this expression. So all I have now, there's no more gamma. It's all alpha and beta that we're dealing with. Actually, gamma is harder to write than alpha and beta. So I'm just going to um, celebrate that and bring this down here and say that cosine alpha plus cosine beta must be equal to sine alpha plus beta. Nice. So, oh, maybe I should have gone one more step, you know, because sine alpha plus beta, this is still locked up. So if I free everybody so that they're individual, or maybe not, Let's see. Let's use the double angle identity for this again and see if there's a relationship we can establish, you know. So we're going to use the same identity, sine alpha plus beta is going to be sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta. So we're going to go again and say that, let's bring this down here. So this is going to be sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta beta. So it means cosine alpha plus cosine beta equals this. 
at this point, what I would like to do is see if I can pull similar things together and um, we might be able to factor something out. So what I'm going to do is because this is cosine alpha and this also has cosine alpha, I'm going to take this and take it to that side. So I'm going to have cosine alpha, where is it? Minus cosine alpha sine beta will be equal to, I'm going to bring this over here. So it's going to be minus cosine beta to join this plus sine alpha cosine beta. Now, I can factor something out. I can factor cosine alpha out. I'm going to end up with 1 minus sine beta, which is equal to minus cosine beta. And because I factored this out, it's going to be 1, but this changes this to a minus. That's sine alpha. Nice. Okay. Now, do you notice something that if alpha and beta are both in the first quadrant, that is both of them are between zero and pi over two, this is gonna be positive. This is gonna be smaller than one so that this expression is positive. So it's positive times positive giving you positive. If you go here, it's gonna be the same thing. But then there's a minus here. A positive number can never be equal to a negative number. The only time this happens is when both of them are zeros, right? So the only time you, again, based on the assumption that both alpha and beta are less than pi over two, okay? If both of them are less than pi over two, this is impossible because then you're gonna have a positive being equal to a negative. So this equation is impossible if both alpha and beta are less than pi over 2. The only way it's possible is if one of them is pi over 2, because with pi over 2, then you're going to say cosine pi over 2 is 0. Yes. And then 1 minus sine pi over 2 also will be 0, so you end up with 0 on both sides. Now, there's a third situation, which would be if one of them is less than pi over 2 and the other is greater than pi over 2, still satisfying this condition, and we're gonna talk about that. But I just wanna make something clear here. So we have this equation is always true if both sides equal zero. Right? If this is zero, this is zero. We don't care whether there's a negative or not. That is alpha equals pi over two or beta equals pi over two. It is always true. Okay, let me make another step. This equation is never true. If both alpha and beta are less than pi over 2, this can never be true. I already explained that. It is impossible for you to have this pa, pa, pa. Because if this is less than pi over 2, and this is less than pi over 2, this expression here will be negative. This expression here will be positive. Positive is never equal to negative, and that's it. Uh, this is the check. This is the no-no. Now, let alpha, now we know, because they're all angles equal to pi, the, the, their sum cannot be greater than pi, right? So, okay, so, let alpha be less than pi over 2 and beta be greater than pi over 2 without loss 
of generality, okay? This is important. So we could switch whichever we're dealing with, but I just like alpha write, writing alpha before beta, okay? Now, let's assume in this triangle, beta is just some angle bigger than 90 degrees. Now, how do I know they're the angles of a triangle just with this? Alpha plus beta plus gamma equals pi means they can fit perfectly into the corners of a triangle. So now start imagining a triangle where one of the angles is greater than 90 degrees and the other two are just tiny angles, okay? And gamma is just one of them, right? And then we have this one. Now, is this equation possible? Note that cosine alpha times one minus sine beta equals negative cosine beta times one minus sine alpha becomes, note what happens. Remember we have claimed now that one of the angles is bigger, okay? Because that's what's capable of switching the sign. Whenever you're dealing with an angle greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees, you use the reference angle. If you use the reference angle because it's cosine, it is negative in the second quadrant. Okay? Right? So what I'm going to do is instead of writing beta, I'm just going to write the reference angle and use the correct sign so that this switches. So this is what happens. You're going to have, before we go, let's divide. Let's bring this alpha here. So we have becomes cosine alpha over one minus sine alpha. So I'm dividing this by this. I'm going to divide this by this. So you're going to have equals negative cosine beta over one minus sine beta. Okay. Now using the reference angles, if I replace beta with its reference angle in the second quadrant, it's going to be since beta is in quadrant two, beta equals negative of pi minus beta. Nice. And by the way, we're only concerned about this because it is cosine. For sine, we don't care. As long as it's in quadrant one or quadrant two, it is always positive. So we don't need to change the sign. But for cosine, we will be changing the sign. This minus is coming out here and changing this to a plus. So what you're gonna get is you have cosine alpha over one minus sine alpha will become, this negative is gonna disappear now. Since we're using the reference angle, this minus is gonna change this guy so that what you have, because everything becomes positive, is gonna become cosine. This is what we get. So you might be wondering, okay, so what's going on? What's going on? Well, what's going on is that we have replaced this now with the acute angle that is between zero and pi over two. So our claim comes back to we're now going to have two positive expressions. Okay. But this is impossible because this is exactly this if alpha is pi minus beta. This is impossible since it implies alpha equals pi minus beta. but that is alpha plus beta equals pi. But this is not true. This is what is true. Alpha plus beta plus gamma equals pi. So it means we've thrown away gamma and we're assuming gamma is zero, but gamma is not zero because we're told that all of them are greater than zero.
but alpha plus beta equals pi minus gamma. I didn't want to write gamma anymore, but I have to write it one more time. So this is a contradiction. Therefore, alpha equals pi over two or beta equals pi over two. Okay, I think we just did it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.